In this tutorial, we're going to look at some of the advanced triggering options that are available in the LaCroix Voyager USB 3.0 protocol analyzer. We'll look at snapshot and manual recording methods. We'll show you how to do an event trigger. We'll look at filtering. We'll then show you how to do a sequence of events, as well as how to do loops and add timers. We've opened the LaCroix USB protocol suite application. This is the main software used to control the analyzer. I'm going to click on the recording options. There are three recording types in the USB Voyager software, snapshot, manual trigger, and event trigger. Snapshot is the simplest and is often used when a developer is not sure what events he wants to trigger on and just wants to see what's going on on the bus. We can demonstrate by setting a buffer for about 20 megs. I'll hit record and you'll notice down below the buffer fills instantly. The capture is uploading. You'll see packets in the trace, but with USB 3.0 high data rate exchanges, you can very quickly fill a large buffer when using the snapshot capture method. The manual trigger mode has a similar operation. That is when you select manual trigger, you're gonna control when the analyzer stops recording via the software interface. For example, say you want to try to capture a hang condition that occurs on your DUT. You'll generally need to use a bigger buffer and you'll want to primarily capture traffic that occurs before you hit the trigger button. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to click record and you'll see that the analyzer is filling up the buffer with data. It's going to begin overriding the oldest data once it's full. Now I see the hang condition on my DUT, so I hit stop. It's going to then upload the most recently captured information into the display, allowing me to analyze exactly what occurred before the hang condition was captured. It's a nice feature to have, but it often mandates a bigger buffer because you clearly don't always know how much data you need to capture in order to see the problem. So most developers rely on the event trigger, which allows you to define specific events at the protocol layer that you then trigger on. It allows you to use smaller memory buffers for one. You still can use the trigger position to see more traffic after the trigger occurs or more traffic before the trigger occurs. With these options set, we'll click over onto the USB 3 recording rules tab. This workspace allows you to specify individual trigger events or a sequence of events to trigger on. In this bin, you store your favorite triggers, which you use most frequently. You simply drag the event over and it will now become the active trigger event. To add new events to this bin, you simply click on the new event button. You'll see a list of all the available events, which includes all the USB 3 packet types, packet headers, as well as link commands. The LFPS signaling and some other events are available, such as the TS1 and TS2 symbols. You can also select individual fields within a packet header. For example, I will choose TPAC, the transaction packet. When I open it, I see a dialog that shows a mask match window that allows me to specify individual fields, such as a NumP of zero. And say I wanted to trigger on a NumP of zero from the device side. Well, these buttons allow you to control direction. Remember, these will always be from the host perspective, what the host receives and what the host transmits. If we want to see a packet that the host receives, we disable the TX or host transmit. Now I'll click on the Actions tab. This is where you specify that you want this event to be the trigger event. You can also tell the analyzer to trigger its external signaling ports when this event occurs. This is primarily for signaling to external instruments such as a scope. I'm going to close this event. Let's get rid of the LMP. I just drag this over and it is now the trigger event. I hit OK. I'll hit Record and you'll notice that the analyzer triggers immediately. It uploads and places the viewer on the precise packet we triggered on. This is a TPAC from the device 
direction. Okay, so this is again the Rx side from the host and at num p of 0. Very simple to trigger on a field within a packet header. Let me close the trace, go back to the recording options. What if you'd like to now filter out individual events that are maybe not important to your analysis, such as the all present flow control symbols? It's really quite simple to go in and select the L good N and the L cred X dash X and the dash n wildcard essentially allows me to select a single event that will filter out any L cred and any L good that's detected in the trace. Filtering out is set in the actions tab as well. Of course, you can trigger on these events. In this case, we're simply going to filter them out. I'm going to hit OK. I'll hit the record button. The trace will upload immediately. It places the marker on the first TP ACK from the device side, numP of zero, no link commands, no L goods, no L creds. This is true hardware filtering where these events are removed from memory. They do not occupy any memory space.